like that one. These women are doing research. And these women are doing research, too. The girls in the company test kitchens. They put all these products through their paces from the woman's point of view. It wasn't easy being a female scientist in the 1950s. It was a challenge. Women were much more likely to be cast as homemakers than scientists. We called her Miss McCoy. Now, she was Dr. McCoy. I don't know why. In the 1950s, Professor Anna Maria Williams was a graduate student at UW-Madison. At the time, she recalls, even women who were tenure-track professors were not addressed as doctor. It's so funny to call her. I, I look back and why did we call her Miss and, and everyone else doctor? There was no concept in my life that I could be a scientist or that I would want to be a scientist. I was trained to be a teacher, a nurse, and that's the, that was the norm for most of the women. So it was a huge effort that Dr. Williams and people like Dr. Barnes started this for young women to give them the concept that they could be more, do more, work at the university here. In the 1950s, during the post-war economic boom, women were expected to be homemakers. Women scientists were hard to find. In fact, the number of women earning advanced degrees was dropping. In the 1920s, women had earned 15% of doctoral degrees. By the 1950s, that number had dropped to only 10%. In 1959, members of the Women's Science Fraternity, Sigma Delta Epsilon, started a high school day mentoring program. The idea was to bring young women from the Madison area to the University of Wisconsin. There, they'd learn about opportunities for women in the sciences. Well, at first, uh, we had few women in the sciences, but then by the time the end of the 70s, our majors in biology and chemistry, it was just about even Stephen, just about half women, half men. Today, the program is called Expanding Your Horizons. It has grown into an annual day-long program that exposes middle school girls to careers in science and technology. The girls visit the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Edgewood College, Madison Area Technical College, and area businesses. More than 450 girls from throughout South Central Wisconsin participate each year. Why focusing on middle school girls is that um, we realized working with the girls that they're already thinking about how to juggle family and career at that age. And by the time they get into high school, they've already pretty much decided what they can do with their lives, or if not, you know, their lives as much as what they can study. And so to really affect any kind of positive change in their lives, we needed to reach them at a younger age. And nationally, internationally, research has shown that girls are already making the decision whether to take math, science, at that age, whether they like it or not. And so it was, you can do it. And as I mentioned, I saw the change during the 70s. And then, but uh, now, I think, because the culture has changed, I think they know more they can do it, uh, but they have to know what's available to them uh, and how to go about it. Um, when I came, there was like so many different like types that I didn't know about, like zoology and everything, and I learned a lot about all the different types of science out there. We talked about engineering, it's not really science, so I just learned like um, that the cupcakes, like like carrots, cannot only be one color. I didn't know that there were other colors than just that. Like I guess when I first came, like I didn't really. I thought it was just going to be like science in general. Like I didn't really think about all the different types of science there are out there. I think it's great. I mean, I don't think anywhere else, not even in science class in middle school, there's just so many kids, you get the kind of hands-on experience that you do at EYH, and you can do all sorts of different things. I mean, there's engineering ones, there's math ones, there's these science ones, there's, I think, specific um, vet med ones. So it's, it's just a way that girls can come and spend a day, and really, too, you get to know other girls from other um, 
from other schools, and they have an undergrad actually taking them around. So I think it's really good for them to to see an undergrad to spending their time doing these things and grads. So they're seeing people from all levels, all ages, and they're getting the hands-on experience that I just don't think that they can get every day in a classroom with that many kids. EYH is just a great opportunity for girls to be introduced to um, science careers because there's so many things out there that um, is so far beyond just the typical things that we that come to our head like the veterinarian and the doctor and a science teacher there's so many um, different careers that you could do that are outside of that and still be in science. Today women make up about half the total workforce in the United States Still, only one in five of the country's scientific and technical workers is a woman. Women of color are even more underrepresented in the sciences. It's such a, a wonderful thing for women in science, and I didn't have something like this when I was, you know, when I was younger. And maybe had I had, it would have put me in the, per, in the direction I wanted to go earlier instead of you know, now as finally a postdoc and I'm like 27, I'm finally doing what I want to do. So I think it can kind of give girls a perspective early on of things that they might want to do later in life. What do you think of, what do most of us think of when we think of a scientist? The image that we get in our mind is that of a man in a lab coat, a white man in a lab coat. So EYH can do its small part to change that image by sharing with girls for our one day that no, it's just, it's a lot more. It's women and men. Yeah, I like that there's just girls because there's not too many camps out there where it's like just girls get to go. We like go to different places and like see, see different things like you would do if you're in college, if you're taking classes, you travel from one place to another. It's a great way to learn about different careers in science. I think that everybody should go because you learn so much and it's tons of fun. I love it. We have built this network and we see that we have made great strides. When you compare to like myself, when I was eight years old in 1959 and having no concept to realize that I would be working here at UW-Madison 50 years later, just a, an amazing thing. So personally, my, one ex my, my own experience reflects the bigger network that we have come far, but we have a lot further to go. Mm -hmm.